Hi, I'm Lisa from Azurmolor. Are you tired of carrots turning black because they've been stored in a plastic bag? Or become limp because they have not? Soft and wrinkly peppers or spring onions that go slimy after just a day or two in the fridge? What about broccoli that yellows after just a few days? Say hello to vegetables that last for weeks in the fridge. Most vegetables can last much longer in these fresh bags. I've even had carrots that last for months. To use them, you rinse your vegetables as soon as you bring them home. Then put them in the bag, spray the bag with water to make it damp and pop it in the fridge. Every day, run your hand over each bag to feel if it's still damp. If not, give it a quick spray on the outside. I have a spray bottle in the fridge drawer, ready to freshen up at any time. You'll be surprised how long your veggies are keeping fresh in the fridge. I have two sets and I change the bags over once a fortnight and put the other set in the wash. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, it would really help us grow. And hit that little bell icon so you won't miss a beat. Thank you. We are Andy and Lisa, a musician and an illustrator. This is where all our crazy ideas come together. Welcome to the Sur These bags have to be sewn in 100% cotton, both the outer layer, the wadding and the lining. You cannot use polyester wadding for this, as it will not hold on to the moisture as cotton does. So use pure cotton or a cotton bamboo blend. I roll all three layers onto my rollers. These are just pipe insulation that I bought in the hardware store. And a thick dowel inside to keep them straight. I've got three of them. Pin the edge of each layer onto the roller and roll it up as straight as you can. Smooth the fabric out as you go so you don't get any folds or puckers. I used about 150 by 120 centimeter, that's 59 by 47 inches of each layer. But I usually adjust the size and the number of bags that comes out of it according to the size of leftover cotton wadding that I have. If you can find 100% cotton pre-quilted fabric, please feel free to skip this quilting part and jump directly to the pattern making marked on the screen. To layer your fabrics, lay out the main fabric first, right side down, then the cotton wadding and lastly the calico lining. Roll all three rolls together, one little bit at a time, and pin the layers together with safety pins. You can also use basting spray if you prefer. I pin them quite close together so that the layers cannot slide and I smooth them out as I go. I use these specially bent quilting safety pins because they are easy to close on a flat surface. I put a link to them in the description below. Adjust the rolls as they unroll to make sure the layers are still flat and smooth. Pin the whole thing and then cut off any excess material. Fold the pinned fabric sandwich on the diagonal and mark the fold. Then fold it on the other diagonal and mark that too.
Make a straight line through the marks so that you end up with a cross diagonally across the fabric. These are the stat lines for the quilting. Move those safety pins that are directly in the way of these first two lines of sewing. Then sew the two lines across the fabric, first one diagonal, then turn the whole thing a quarter and sew across on the other diagonal. When you have your first lines, you can attach your distance gauge to the machine. I set mine up for 4 cm, that's about 1.5 inch. You can now follow the previous seam to get an even distance between each line. Remove the safety pins as you go. After each seam, I turn the fabric one quarter and work my way from the middle to the outside one seam at a time. Don't worry if each line is not exactly the same distance apart or are super straight. Just keep it as close as you can and it'll be fine. Even though mine are a bit wonky here and there, it does not show on the finished item. Now it's time for the patterns. Cut the rectangular pattern for the size of bags that you need. For all sizes, I measure 10 cm, that's 4 inches, from one end and make a line. This is for the closing flap. Round the corners of the flap using a mug or similar. Fit as many patterns as you can on the quilted fabric and cut them out. Zigzag around each piece. This is where you choose your own colors for the bias binding. I usually choose the color according to what I want to store in them. Orange for carrots, red for red peppers, dark green for broccoli and yellow for sweet corn and so on. First sew the bias binding on the short edge. Unfold the bias binding, line it up with the edge and sew in the fold.
for the second pass, fold it over and top stitch 1 mm from the edge. Then fold the bag, leaving 10 cm or 4 inches for the flap. Zigzag the bag together at the two sides. Last time I made the bags, I didn't close off the ends of the bias binding, and it nags me every time I see it. This time, I've found a way to make the ends neater, so that is what I'm showing here. On the first pass of the bias binding, start on the front bottom corner. Open the one side and fold the end around the fabric at the beginning. Align it to the edge and sew in the fold. Ease it around the corners at the flap. When you reach the other end, cut the bias binding 2 cm longer and fold it around the fabric again before sewing the last bit. Then turn the bias binding out, stretch it out from the seam all the way around and especially at the rounded corners. This makes it easier to get it neat when top stitching. At the beginning, fold the already folded bit over twice and hold it in place at the corner. You will see that the inside corner is sticking out from the edge. Tuck this corner in so that it is hidden by the outer layer. Stick a pin through the outer layer first 
Then turn the pin over to force the edge further than the inner part and pin it in place. Line up the edge of the very end and pin that in place. Do the same at the other end before you start top stitching. It is always easier to get a neat finish at the end of a seam than it is at the start. So I like to cheat and start a few centimeters from the end and start in the wrong direction. I then sew very slowly to the end, as in the beginning. Then backstitch about three to four stitches and leave the needle down. I then turn the whole thing right way around again and continue as if I had made this neat beginning. Top stitch all the way around, making sure to ease it around the corners to the other end. Slow down at the end to make a nice, neat ending. Both ends are now neatly folded over and look nice. Sew the rest of the bags in the same way. One good habit that has come out of the Covid pandemic is to wash all of our produce as soon as we come home from shopping. This is a habit that I want to keep. Of course there are veggies that should not be washed, such as mushrooms. I just brush them off with a soft brush and put them in their bag. I spray the bag on the outside to keep them damp. I put the washed and still wet vegetables directly in the fresh bag, then spray the outside of the bag with water. The damp bags are what keeps the veggies fresh for longer. I use orange edging for carrots.
red for red peppers. Yellow for sweet corn. Light green for spring onions. Dark green for broccoli. The large bags hold either one large broccoli or two smaller ones. Red for red chilies. Pale yellow for ginger. When it is all loaded in my vegetable drawer in the fridge, it is easy to see what I have. I can see I have mushrooms, carrots, red chilies, green beans, and munch too underneath. Broccoli, spring onions, red peppers, and lastly, sweet corn and ginger. Every day I feel the outside of each bag if it is still damp. If it is not, I spray it with a spray bottle I have stored right there in the fridge. Now enjoy having vegetables that keep fresh in the fridge for so much longer. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, give us a like. Please subscribe to our channel, it's completely free. And if you hit the little bell icon, you'll be notified when we upload new videos. And remember, in a world where you can be anything, be kind.